right, hello guys, what's going on? 5869 with another uh, replay analysis. This time we're going to be going over Dereal MVP, who's going to be playing uh, over here on the Storm Spirit. Um, I think he's just normal skill bracket. I'm pretty sure he didn't put in what his MMR was. I could be wrong though. Um, I probably should have paid a little bit more attention. I don't have the post up anymore. Um, but yeah, he just wanted me to go over uh, whatever game. I think he just linked me his profile and said like choose whatever uh, Yada yada yada. Anyways He is gonna be the mid storm spirit. Um, he's gonna be up against most likely The tinker probably gonna have to be a support Zeus. I imagine it's gonna be tinker mid so itemization not that bad um, Uh Yeah, I guess it's not that bad either. I think you either go for um, two branch tango or an L talisman tango. I don't think you go two branch and mantle. Like that's a, a little bit um, much in terms of stats. I think um, probably just gonna want to get a bottle rush, especially against a tanker. You probably just want to get a bottle rush because it'll be pretty difficult for him to deal with you pushing out a lane like right away unless he does like some max, max march build or, or something like that. Um, but, you know, if you get an early bottle and you really pressure the lane with uh, Overload and um, Static Remnant, uh, you you know, it'll be a lot more difficult for the tanker, especially if you can force creeps under tower, making it, you know, tougher for him to last hit. Then it, it just means perhaps a later Boots of Travel, stuff like that. So I think two Tangos, um, or so, sorry, Tangos, two Branches is probably the best bet. Just b rush out that bottle as fast as possible. If, you know, you've got some teammates that'll comply, just like two Tangos and then two or sorry, two shared tangos and then two branches is probably pretty good as well. This chance is pretty strong, I guess. Um, so it's going to be pretty hard for him, or, or at least a little bit annoying. There's the overload. Probably going to miss. No, doesn't even miss uphill there. Doesn't even miss uphill there. Really? How many is that? There you go. That's the missed uphill chance. So uh, Creep equilibrium, not really in his favor. Should probably be trying to pull it back by auto-attacking uh, You know the tinker. If, uh, a little bit of a trick here for, for those of you that may not know it, if you can't auto attack the Tinker because he's up here or, you know, because you got kind of crappy range and, and you'll start running up to him. Um, oh, he's got to be really careful here. Just, what? No way. He's going to die anyways, but it doesn't matter. That was huge. That should have been way better, but, um, oh man, that's killer for sure. For sure. That's annoying. Um, anyways. Uh, if you can't see the tinker or somebody's on the high ground, whatever, you don't want to try to, you know, auto attack him. If you change targets, like if you look up top here and you do it to the AM, the creeps will still aggro you. They actually still aggro you. So the, the hero doesn't have to be within a certain AOE. So if you want to pull them back, you just look top, uh, you know, auto attack the AM and then, you know, you don't have to worry about running towards the tinker and, and being in an unfavorable position, something like that. Probably shouldn't chase the tinker because the tinker's got bottle. If he plays it well, he should easily be able to get a kill here as it looks like he might be able to do so. Probably going to hit that static remnant. No, he's actually going to go right down in the river. If he gets level 4, that'll be pretty huge for this, I, I'd say for sure. Look at how aggressive this storm spirit is. This would be huge right now. I don't even know if he needs to... Uh, yeah, he's got level 4 now. Like, just... He could just... He could honestly kill him right now. 160, yeah, 200. Yeah, he should be dead. He should easily be dead here. And it looks like he is dead. That's going to be it, so... Another kill, unfortunately, the Invis rune. Uh, they don't have a ward there, so he wasn't really checking. And, and you know, that, that kind of sucks. He's getting pinged out by the Pudge. He's probably, you know, giving him a rough time. But uh, probably should be playing a little bit safer. Like, there's no reason that you have to be up there. I get the creeps are high ground, but maybe just walk up if you have to something. But it, it was pretty aggressive. Um, so, you know, you got to be careful of that. You guys don't have wards, which really sucks. So, it, you know, if you had wards and you saw the Invis rune, I'm, I'm sure you would have played a lot safer. Um, but, you know. Nevertheless, it, it does happen, and it looks pretty rough so far. I'd probably um, just grab the, the boots at this point, I think, would probably be the best option. Um, just so you don't get absolutely crushed in lane, uh, because really this guy should have his boots soon, and, and that's going to make it so hard for you to harass him and try to push him out of lane, and he should kind of have a positioning advantage as well as the regen. So, you know, if you can try to nullify that. Look at that damage. Actually, Storm Street just does a ton of damage. You... you, you that miss chance is so good, actually. Oh, my lord. Four seconds. Like, that's actually so good. And you have to take that into consideration is that, one, it's pure damage. So, 240 pure damage is pretty disgusting this early on. And the miss chance is huge as well. So, I hopefully, I, you know, you're not ticked off that you, you know, I, I spectated. Or I, I'm trying to do an analysis of 
kind of a rough game for you, but uh, I think that's probably the best game I could have gone over. Honestly, really, really probably could have used the boots here. Sell like a branch, get the boots. And, you know, from there, at least you won't get as rolled over by this Tinker. But it's going to be hard for this Tinker right off the bat. And uh, you're going to be really behind on whatever item timing you go for. I think um, this is probably like a Treads Yules game. I think if you go Orchid, like it's going to be way too late for this AM. Um, if you go Orchid, it, it's not going to help you too much against the Tinker either. Like he's going to have a blink. So it's going to be tough because it's probably going to be like a 30-minute Orchid, I imagine, for somebody of, of your skill level. It's going to come out super late. Um, so, you know, we'll see. This guy's dominating now. And, you know, the Tinker's just having a field day. He's got a double kill, 1,500 gold. He's looking at, like, you know, if he's farming properly here, he's looking at probably like eight-minute boots travel. So the Pudge is already given up. This is really annoying for you. Um, but at least you've got some space here. You're still going for the bottle. And, you know, I, I can only imagine how crappy it is for you to be in this game. So, you know, good thing that you're sticking it out. You're not just getting rattled anything like that. The Pudge... I mean, really, what's he doing? He's got three CS, and he's just sitting in the woods here. You, you know, he's not doing anything either. So, you know, it, it's not that bad. You just got to get your boots and, and get back on track. And who knows? Maybe he'll start giving up some of these uh, kills here. And Yeah, look at that. So, the, I mean, the Pudge is no better, really. He's probably going to, like, start pinging out, maybe pinging out you, saying it's your fault, stuff like that. And here we go. The Ricky came up, so the missed chance is pretty good. Bloodseeker is super dead. He literally just needs to hit this guy. And, yeah, there you go. So, he probably should have just hit that AM. But uh, nevertheless, it's going to be done. going to take some damage. you got to be careful of that. Look at that damage. Yeah, really, you have to play so safe right now. Um, because, I mean, 240 pure damage is like a, a third of your health, right? So you've got to be... Uh, actually, it might even be more than 240 now. It's it, it, it No, it's not actually. So it's getting there. But once it's 320, it's like half of your HP almost just on laser. So realistically, this Tinker should probably not... I don't know what he's going for. He's probably trying to gank you again, which you might be able to do. I highly doubt it, though. Um, doing the good old max overload build. Or not max, but I guess pump it out overload build. Uh, I don't mind it. Yeah, you know what? I don't mind it. I think uh, Static Remnant doesn't really scale that well. Um, actually, yeah, it actually scales better than overload. I didn't even know that. Um, so you probably... It's probably better to put two... Yeah. I guess yeah, probably two one two is is your best option there because I think Static Remnant's actually really good as well because you can set up multiple right like this guy I have no idea what he's doing he should be dead here so that's pretty huge you just got a mega kill like you're right back on track that's your treads right there uh, pretty much so nice little pick up there and you're gonna be able to get some farm here so yeah you're pretty much gonna get your treads here so that's not that much slower I guess maybe you can get back on track if you get like one more kill like you you might be able to get a pretty fairly timed orchid when it's all said and done so that's gonna be nice the pudge doing pudge things he's mad that he screwed up his lane and he's probably saying get out of the lane you're awful whatever just let him do what he's gonna do you've got your treads now and you can hopefully try and roam around and, and get some kills so once you've got your treads you really should look to get aggressive maybe tread soul ring um because you're really gonna have to control these lanes against the heroes they've got like they've got an anti-mage They've got a Tinker. And I, I actually think Storm Spirit is pretty good at, at cutting Creep Waves. Um, probably if you have another one in Static Remnant. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. There's your Tread still walking Curry or whatever. But, yeah, I think, like, um, this guy's looking for a kill, I think. But I, I really think, like, if you come up, if you farm maybe this camp and the medium camp, maybe the large camp like you really don't need to do any of that stuff i guess but this guy is he gonna go down you've got static remnant in like a second oh no he's too fast he's got his bots already doesn't he yeah he does so he just bought his bots there um but yeah i think if you if you have two points in a remnant you lay like two remnants there maybe one remnant and uh you cut the creep wave it's actually pretty good against the tinker because he's got to play super safe the creep wave is pushing under tower. He's trying really hard to get his bots. You're probably potentially going to die now. No, you're good. And you know this guy just rocketed you, so there's probably a Ricky on top of you if you're being really careful. And the Ricky looks like he still wants to go for it. He just walks under your tower for some reason, and you ping him out. So that's good. All right, so you're not doing too bad. Still probably uh, need to work on getting your soul ring before you can do too much more. Uh, this anti-mage is actually getting pretty farmed. Actually, no, he's pretty far behind, actually. He's only got 44 last hits, and he's got two kills. I don't know what... Like, this guy should have way more right now. I have no idea why he doesn't, but he really should. Probably because he's doing stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, what the heck? He should have his treads right now. He's going to die. I don't even know what's happening right now. That was actually so weird. He's got three points in a blink. He should have been able to blink out there. But that's always good. The tanker is starting to uh, pressure the map globally for ganks. So he's, he's got the four. Probably going to go the 4-4 four, four build and probably just look to fight early on. He doesn't have anything in a march, right? So he's just going to be really aggressive. The pure damage, pretty good ability. And that's going to be a dead wind runner. Not really much to say about that. You're still mid lane trying to farm up, which isn't bad. Uh, and it looks like you're going for the soul ring. Maybe the orchid. I can't tell which one. Uh, I'd, I'd say the orchid actually might not be that bad. Because this AM is farming extremely poorly. Like, extremely poorly. He's not going to have Battle Fury treads. Actually, he's not going to have... He's, he's, he's going straight Battle Fury, first of all, which is very inefficient. Um, so he's probably not going to have Manta until like 28-ish minutes or so, um, which isn't going to be bad. Which, yeah, you're going Orchid. So I, 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 I think... I don't know if you clicked on the AM or if you're just building it. If you are just building it, uh, for next time, I'd be a little bit more aware of the game itself because like uh, click on the AM and build it because he's pretty far behind. Uh, if you're just randomly building it, you should probably be more aware. Check the AM, check, you know, the Tinker. Um, check what their itemization is going to be and see whether or not it's going to be that good. They should have just seen you there, so I don't think you should get this gank. But the AM blinked like 2 millimeters, so you might be able to get the kill here. And it looks like he's just walking towards you for some reason, so is the Dazzle. Honestly, you should just zip in with uh, a rupture here because this AM should just die to the two of you. Uh, you should be calling out your Bloodseeker right now and telling him to rupture. Because, like, this AM has nothing, right? Like, he should just die right here. And it looks like you're going to spend the Centaur ult. He stuff's going down bot lane. You're kind of wasting a lot of time mid lane here. Or, sorry, top lane. While there's nobody mid lane, right? Like, you buy a TP here. There's no reason for you to be here. The Bloodseeker can handle the lane just fine. Um, you know, he's got to sit back a little bit. It looks like you're TPing bot. You could probably get a kill on the Zeus over there. And I'm surprised nothing happened. So the Pudge is there. You could probably help get a kill here. You're not going to be able to get him. The Zeus is so low. Look at the Zeus. Look at the Zeus. Oh, no. So you should have had vision on the Zeus there. I'm almost certain you actually had vision on the Zeus there. So you should have been paying a little bit more attention. Left that guy alone. Like, look at this Zeus. He's so greedy right now. So greedy. I don't know what just happened there. But if you would have zipped on that Zeus, he's dead, right? So, you know, just be a little bit more aware. Map awareness is super key in Dota, right? So just watching, you know, who's around, who's not around, who could you maybe get a kill on. Missing a couple CS there, but that's just some general mechanical stuff you'll get better at. Um, but really, like, oof, man, that guy's actually pretty scary right now. Four and four, I think, eh? No, four or three and one, so that's pretty good. He's going for March, but whatever, we don't care about him. We're just watching you, which unfortunately you, you have to walk all the way home. And as it looks like that shackle was pretty legit, but it's not going to be okay. Or he's going to blink. All right. I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, but yeah, you should be, yeah, you're doing a pretty good job. You're watching what's going on, but you're not necessarily like clicking on the heroes, right? So you should be clicking on them, seeing, you know, what people are building and, and stuff like that, right? You're getting a dust for Ricky, which I like. You are a ganking hero. So uh, you do like to be involved in the fights. But I, I think uh, what a lot of people do when they go to, to buy an orchid, is they kind of fight in between, right? Which, to me, doesn't make sense because you should be just trying to get as fast of an Orchid as possible, right? Like, that's all you want. It's just a really quick Orchid. So, like, these fights, they don't really help you that much. If this guy gets away, that's pretty huge, honestly. Looks like he's going to go down. Bloodseeker's going to get it, though. So, that's not bad. How much gold do you get from that? You got 343, so that's good. A little bit of a misplay from him. But, really, you should just be in the jungle, in the lane, and try to farm up Orchid as fast as possible. You should. You don't really want to fight in between because if you die or if you don't really get anything done in the fight, you've wasted a lot of time. So, like, you got 300 gold there, but think about what you're doing after. Now you're walking home. You're not hitting anything for about a minute here. You have to buy a TP to get back out to where you need to go. So, really, that only netted you about a couple hundred gold. Um, in which case, you could have gotten the same couple hundred gold by, like, going mid and farming these, right? Like, that's a couple hundred gold. Creep wave, that's another like 300, 400. You probably would have netted like 400, 500 gold if you would have just gone mid instead of going bottom and, and farmed out, right? So 
you got to be a little bit aware of, of your item timings and, and kind of how you want to get there, stuff like that, because you could have been a lot further ahead. You probably could have had a quarter or sorry, an oblivion staff and then like another little bit. And it looks like you're going to fight bottom again. But really, what are you going to do here? Uh, not that much. Realistically, that guy's going to die no matter what. This guy's probably going to get away. And now it's a sad day for you because this dude's just going to like uh, target you with laser or something. And you do get that kill for 500 gold, but you're probably going to... Oh, my Lord. All right. So that ended up working out again as well. Uh, only about a 400 gold net gain since you did TP there, but still not too bad. This is actually working out a lot better than it should be. Um, because you really don't need to fight, right? Like, I guess there, yeah, like, you, you can go and, and get the kill. You should have been secured that kill no matter what. So that one wasn't actually that bad. Um, this guy's just having a field day, right? He's just super pissed that... He's like 0-5, and, and, and you're not 0-5. So, you know, he's going to blame it on you, yada, yada. Anyways, you should TP mid. Don't wait to TP top. Yeah, there's not really any reason you would want to TP top. You should just go to TP mid or, or start walking mid. I guess you could go bot. It's going to start pushing in. That's not that bad either. Um, but you do have to be a little bit careful since you know there's two heroes there. But realistically, I think mid's... Oh, no. Is this going to be worth it? It looks like it actually might be. This guy's just going to TP out and get four staff. Bye. Bloodseeker. All right. So that was a little bit funky. And now, so this is what I mean, right? Like you TP in there, you gain nothing. And now you're, you're farming alongside another core. So you're really not getting anything here. The Tinker, I don't know what he was thinking for a second there. But now you guys are, are, are kind of wasting time, right? Like you're all here together. You're going to push this tower. But they really didn't need you like you're not really putting out that much more damage right they're all still very far away even if it's like 10 seconds slower um they still get it most likely and you're in another lane and you're getting a lot more out of not being there and, and wasting your time right so you go you spend 100 gold to get up there and you get nothing so now you're behind 100 gold you have to buy another tp so you spend another 100 gold looks like there's gonna be a fight here you have to be very careful of the anti-mage that's level six so even though he can't hit you for that much about uh 500 damage just from his ulti is going to be pretty huge, which is probably what it's going to end up being. It's like 0.6 damage. Uh, it ends up being like 0.4 or something once the 25% is taken into account, 0.3 like something. Um, so you're looking at like 500 damage-ish. Um, so yeah, yeah, the Pudge is again being a dick. You don't really need to be there. Again, you're going to find a stack here, and, and this is what you should have been doing all game long. Like This is some, some pretty serious farm here. Soul Ring would have been good. You're going to run into the Ricky. The Pudge is just doing Pudge things. The Ricky's probably going to look to kill you here. He's got a Diffusal Blade, and, and you won't have any mana. He's pinging out for God knows who. You ran into him there. You probably should have known that. You could probably TP out if he tries to go on you, if you have your Strength Treads up. And it looks like he's actually just going to leave you. Oh, no, there it is. Oh. Yeah, you're going to go down. Not really much you could have done there because you had no idea he was there. The Pudge, still doing Pudge things. Um... But again, you, you could have had a much earlier Orchid here and maybe survived that if you had an earlier Orchid just by farming up. So just something to consider, not joining fights as much. I should probably start speeding this up since I've just been going like real time for essentially this entire game. But yeah, so, you know, farming the Orchid up is really important. You're going to TP in and die again. You have to be very careful not to fight, man. Like it's, it's honestly not worth it unless you net like a, quite a few kills. It's really not that worth it. So... You got to be very aware of when to fight, when to not fight, and why. Uh, like, you're farming up here, and, and look at this. This is happy days, man. You're, you're getting the Orchid. You, you kind of join a fight there. I don't think anything happened anyway, so it doesn't really matter what happened there. But you're still going. You join that fight, and uh, hopefully I can get this fight recap. Not bad. You only got about 176 gold gain from that because you spent 100 to TP in. And now you're kind of in the lane. You can't farm too much. You should be going to their jungle. Hopefully this guy doesn't kill you. That'd be pretty annoying. But the anti-mage does. So again, uh, you go to fight. You lose out on a lot. You're still slowly building the Orchid. It's 20 minutes now. It's not as late as I expected. Mainly because you got that guy's mega kill. And that's pretty helpful in my opinion. Pudge still just hating on everybody. He thinks he's like super sick. Whatever. Um, you should still looking around. You get a nice dust kill there. And you just about have your Orchid. And now you've got it. And now... From here on out, it's going to be very interesting to see how you play. Because now is when you should fight and look for pickoffs. I think uh, I would probably jungle up and grab a couple wards with that jungle farm. And place them fairly aggressively. Because you're, obviously your team's not really warding. You need that aggressive vision 
to you know work with that orchid so now is when you farm which is kind of odd uh but you know it's not that big of a deal i just think once you have the orchid you want to try to not show the orchid like any major item like orchid or blink um perhaps even sheep to an extent you you want to try to not show the first time until you use it right because if they click on you they see you top they know you've got an orchid this anti-mage who's like super under farmed right now he's, he's actually like <clears throat> excuse me super under farmed he's not gonna have mantha for another like five to eight minutes you well actually probably five minutes um you've got a, a, a small window to gank him and you have to put that window to good use so you, you don't want to show with the orchid now you're in the jungle which is like why are you in the jungle now that you've got an orchid right so you shouldn't really be in the jungle you should be trying to find a kill here you're <clears throat> trying to get a soul ring it, it looks like and there's the tp going for the zeus here the pudge is there and you just zip in and get the kill that's totally what that guy deserves you're still zipping you've got not a lot of mana you should be kind of aware of, of you know what's going on ricky's gonna get a mega kill that's actually pretty huge and moving back into the jungle Blah, blah, blah. This guy's going to die. You're going for the zip again. That was a little bit aggressive. So we'll go over kind of what happened here and, and how you could have avoided it. So you're TPing in to this mid. Wait, where the heck is this TP going? What's happening right now? Okay, right. You're TPing in right there and you're zipping here. So the first thing is, is that Actually, you should have... Actually, you probably didn't see that guy. Um, but you zip in, and it's kind of like... Even if these two heroes aren't there, what's the point of zipping in just for Zeus, right? Like, it's really all not that worth it. He's actually pretty farmed. But even then, like, it's going to be split between the two of you. It's going to be a couple hundred gold, and, and that's it, right? And you notice that, look, top lane's pushing in, nobody's there. Bot lane's pushing in, nobody's there. So they're most likely in their jungle. So you have to be a little bit map aware... When you do play a hero like Storm Spirit, somebody that's gank heavy, if you want to join team fights, stuff like that, because you see this guy dying, and it's like, um, one second here, which vision is yours? This is your vision? No, this is their vision. This is your vision. All right, so if you look at your vision, you see absolutely nobody on the map. There's nobody here. There's nobody at this creep wave. There's nobody that's going to be up here. So this is a very risky zip in for not that great of a reward. So we'll take a look at... Oh, sorry, slow that down. We'll take a look at what happens here. So let's see, the fight recap before that guy dies. Uh, it's not even showing that you, you got any... What the heck? The, the replays are actually impossible to deal with. Alright, let's see. Let's try to let's get that out of there. Okay, so you actually lost 51 gold there. It wouldn't show me the fight recap because it wasn't saying it's over. I wish it would have showed me um, what happened there. But actually, we can just uh, do one of those fancy dancy click on you, check your gold things. Alright, so you've got 491 gold. You zip in, you get 400 gold from that. So that's not bad. How much do we have in terms of unreliable? Ah, we'll deal with that later. We'll see. You're at 866. Now what happens when you die? We'll take a look at that. You lose 200. So really, uh, that was actually a 200 net worth gain. But now you're dead for a minute, which is a lot more. So it's actually a massive, probably like a 700, 800 net worth loss. Because you're dead for about a minute's worth of farming. And more importantly, what it does here is it gives this guy a ton of space. And now he's almost got his Manta. So, he's... Oh, no, he does have his Manta, actually. Oh, no, he doesn't have his Manta. Okay, I don't know. So, he's almost got his Manta. And the window of this Orchid being effective is slowly dwindling, right? Because now this Zeus is tanky anyway. He's got an Aghanim Scepter. The Tinker, he's got a Blink Dagger, as well as he'll have a Dagon. So, he's not too worried about not being able to output any damage. Plus, it's going to be hard to catch him anyways. So, it's going to be harder for you to use this orchid as time goes on and you bought it but it hasn't really been effective right so i'm not saying don't buy it it was a good purchase but you went to the jungle and you haven't really chosen the greatest fights in order to use it right so you spot the anti-mage there 
And now it looks like you're gonna go for a kill on the Dazzle. You get an Orchid kill. Perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. There's a couple heroes there, but whatever. You're gonna get this nice little rune. You're gonna get an energy booster. You're gonna look for some more kills, it seems. And just gonna get blown up because Tinker is a pretty good hero, I guess. And that's whatever. So, still going on. Point just being super annoying. And uh, you're still just kind of watching, you're paying attention. At least you're watching the fight, you're paying attention to what's happening. But you should be clicking on their items, maybe paying attention to what they've got, knowing that uh, I'm pretty sure this Dazzle has a mechanism. So being aware of that if you ever go to gank them. Um, checking on the, the um, Manta timing for this Anti-Mage. Checking if the Zeus is going Yule Scepter, because that's going to be important as well if you ever try to gank them. You really need to know if there's a Yule's going in here. That's not that bad. And congratulations, we have hit the point where it's going to always look like you are in Ball Lightning. So that's not going to help us all that much, but uh, whatever, we'll deal with that later. So rotating around the map, getting some nice farm here, going to help secure that kill. You don't have the Orchid, though. The Orchid wasn't necessary on the Ricky there. If you would have saved it for the Tinker, you may have been able to turn around. But nevertheless, you're still alive, just barely going to get home. That's going to be pretty nice. Um, still going going to help get a kill on the Tinker bot lane. So you're starting to farm quite well. And you, you go for a Bloodstone, which I think is all right. I think a, a Sheep is, is very necessary. Because you're not going to have any way to hold down this Anti-Mage. If you clicked on him in a while, you would notice that he's got a Basher. So he's probably not that close to a BKB, which he really isn't. He's going to go down here maybe. No, he's probably going to be fine here. Yeah, he's going to live. This is disgusting. But he's going to live, um, and a sheep is, is really important now because the orchid's not going to do anything against him. Uh, a sheep's going to be super effective against the tanker, against the Zeus. And I think the bloodstone, when you're this far behind, is very sketchy, right? Like, the raw stats for your mana pool are, are pretty good. But after that, you're not going to be getting any charges because you guys have not won a team fight in, like, forever. It's very difficult to gank these heroes now. And there's really not all that much you can get with the bloodstone, right? So I think what you have to realize... With a bloodstone, uh, I, it, in professional Dota or like high tier Dota, I guess, um, when players get bloodstones when they're behind, they, they usually play around it really well. Um, you know, they they're very aware of how many charges they have. They use it to farm up with the base charges they've got, and then if they can find fights after that, they really try to. But um, at a lower level, it's probably a little bit harder to take into consideration. So you gotta kind of be really careful with it. Uh, truly, I don't like Bloodstone that much at a lower level. I think items like Sheepstick, um, yeah, I think Sheepstick BKB would be really good this game. BKB especially, um, because it'll help you deal with, uh, the Tinker, the Zeus, stuff like that. Um, and Storm Spirit is good with the BKB, like, he's definitely really solid with the BKB. Because, how do they control you when you're zipping around with the BKB? Like, they actually just can't. Um, so, you know, it's not a bad idea. At this point, the game's pretty much over. Um, just a few general mistakes getting uh, aggressive early on when you've got to be careful you got to understand the damage types right that it's pure damage so it's not reduced by anything it's giving you a, a missed chance which is very important since a lot of storms damage comes from the overload perhaps changing the build a little bit and instead of maxing the overload putting more into the static remnant that way he takes more remnant damage since you're not guaranteed all these right clicks um, something like that is, is pretty important right uh, and as we move on here uh, again, the Orchid timing being very important for using it right when you have it and trying not to show it. Um, you know, just general things. Hopefully you, you caught on to what I was saying because I kind of don't remember. I've just been babbling on for uh, quite a few hours today. So all these games have kind of meshed into one. Um, but, you know, it, it was a good game. Uh, you definitely tried your best. You were coming back there. I thought it was going to be a much later Orchid. Um, but, like, you know... You do get a kill with the Bloodstone there, that's pretty good. But at this point, like, the game's pretty well over. They've got an Anti-Mage and a Tinker that are far further ahead than your cores. And it's just going to get harder from here. He goes Abyssal for some reason on the AM, which, like, actually blows my mind. You're still getting Bloodstone charges, which is really good. Um, because you probably shouldn't be at this point. But they're getting very sloppy, and, you know, that might cause you guys to come back. But, uh, really, it looks like the game's over anyways. Now you're down to six Bloodstone charges, and... Not really much else you could do. It looks like you're you're probably just all tab now. <laughs> so nothing uh, nothing really you could do more on top of that. But you know, just consider the things I talked about. Be very careful with uh, you know if you're getting an item like Orchid that is so timing sensitive. Be very very careful with how you fight and when you fight, because if the fight doesn't work out, that screws with your entire game. So you could have had the Orchid a lot earlier, 
uh, if you would have just gone straight to farming in the jungle, stuff like that. After you got that mega kill that propelled you, you should have you should have just moved into the jungle, push out the lane, you know, stack the jungle camps when you can. If nobody's gonna do it for you, push it out, rotate to the jungle, steal those, um, and by that time you'll have a pretty early orchid. You can pressure this anti mage. You could probably shut down this tinker a little bit more as well, which was obviously super important in this game, but. It's a little bit easier, so be sensitive with stuff like that. Um, you know, think about what items you could be building into later on. So you go for a bloodstone, and it really wouldn't be all that effective because you're so far behind, and it's not going to give you either the team fight control that you need, or you know, the defensive team fight that like a BKB would give you. So be weary of things like that, and uh, you know, keep playing. You did play pretty well. You didn't lane that poorly, uh, you know, try to control the creep wave, pull the creeps back, stuff like that. If you want to, you know, learn more about what I mean there, just look up a general mid guide. That'll help you out a ton. Um, but, you know, not really too much else on top of that. You guys should be uh, good with, you know, hopefully with what I said, and it should help you out a little bit. But thank you for asking me to review your game. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh on you or anything there, and uh, it was a pretty good game. And uh, maybe later on you'll be able to send me one when, you, when you've gotten better and, you know, maybe you hit a wall again and you're stuck. Feel free to, to shoot me another video or another link to your uh, Dota buff and I'll definitely follow up with, you know, a, another little session there. But uh, anyways, thanks again uh, to Real MVP. Hopefully uh, you got something out of this and hopefully other people that are watching got something out of this as well. And uh, take care, guys. Look forward to my next video. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, I have my series from lane to lane where I just cast some everyday pubs that you guys send me. I also do some more professional pubs like uh, games from Koikva, Miracle, whoever I can get my hands on from Dota Buff. I have a learning series as well, so feel free to check that out. There's some more info in the description as well as some videos linked in the annotations at the end here. Thanks a lot.